smell it? They smell like chihuahuas, wet chihuahuas. Our troop leader, Mrs. Margolin, looked like a mother duck. She saw the position of troop leader as an evangelical post. She was especially fond of imparting religious aphorisms by means of acrostics. Satan. Serpent, always tempting and noisome. Bible. Um, basic instructions before leaving Earth. Arnetta always made a point of listening to Mrs. Margolin's religious talk and giving her what she wanted to hear. Because of this, Arnetta could have blared through a megaphone that the white girls of Troop 909 were wet chihuahuas without so much as a blink from Mrs. Margolin. Serious chihuahuas. Octavia, the second in command, so to speak, had hair hung past her butt like a Hawaiian hula dancer's. The sight of Octavia's mane prompted other girls to listen to her reverentially, as though whatever she had to say would somehow activate their own follicles. Caucasian chihuahuas. <laughs> <laughs> Daphne, Daphne hardly ever spoke, but when she did, her voice was petite and tinkly, the voice one might expect from a shiny new earring. She'd written a poem once for Langston Hughes Day, a poem brimming with all the teacher-winning ingredients, trees and oceans, sunsets and moons, but what really cinched the poems for the grown-ups, grown snatching the wind from Octavia's musical ode to Grandmaster Flash and the Furious Five, were Daphne's last lines. You are my father, the veteran, when you cry in the dark, it rains and rains and rains in my heart. Those last lines pricked me. They were so eerie. I'd whisper them over my fruit loops like a mantra. You are my father, the veteran. You are my father, the veteran. Nobody calls us niggers. We can't let them get away with calling us niggers. I said we teach them a lesson, but we can't go to Miss Margaret either, or she'll end up telling us about doing unto others or the path of righteousness or something. Forget that shit. Then go be sleeping, then we go sneak into their cabin. Then we go put daddy long legs in their sleeping bag. Then they wake up, then we beat them up till they flat as frying pans. Shut up, Janice. All right, we're gonna have a meeting and talk about what we're gonna do. Snot, you're not gonna be a bitch and tell Miss Marlin, are you? Maybe you didn't hear the girls right. I mean... So are you telling us or not? Almost in my now if that damn lady would leave. I'm just glad Big Fat Mama's not coming with us. I handled them. I told her we was going to gather leaves. Gather leaves. That's a good one. They think we're so mad crazy about this camping stuff. <laughs> I love me some Michael Jackson. I will marry Michael Jackson. Damn it, we gotta get them alone. They'll never be alone. The only time we'll be unsupervised is in the bathroom. Oh, shut up, snot. The bathroom! The bathroom! The bathroom! Alright, here's the plan. So they'll be in here again, and we'll come in here and be like, hey, how are you doing? How long you'll be here type of thing. And then Octavia and I are going to come in here and tell them what it's going to be like if they ever call one of us in the air again. I'm going to say something, too. Okay, do whatever you want. We're going to teach you girls a lesson. That's what I'm going to say. We're going to teach you little girls a lesson. You couldn't teach me to shit in the toilet. But what if they say we never did that? We didn't call anyone an N-I-G-G-E-R. It's not. Don't think, just fight, if you even know how. <laughs> <laughs> Daphne, you don't have to fight. We're doing this for you. Hey, your mom is coming. Little Robert, do when Octavia and I are gone. Who will buy him cigarettes? Y'all know I love those songs, girls. Why don't you sing me one? Come on, everybody. Life without Jesus, like a donut. Like a donut. Like a donut. Life without Jesus, like a donut. There's a hole in the middle of my soul. If you don't mind, I'm going to head over to the lounge where the beds are. I haven't been the same since my operation. Go right ahead, Linda. I'll watch the girls. Alright, come on everybody, let's wash up. It won't be long, we're old enough to go to the bathroom by ourselves. Well, I guess you Brownings are all in most Girl Scouts, right? Right! Right! You're not gonna come? 
I'm gonna stay too. I'm gonna I'll go to the restroom when Miss Heidi or Daphne goes. No snot. If you go, then you're gonna get in trouble with the rest of us. This place smells like my mother's air freshener. You know, their leader will probably already be there, or they won't even be there at all. It's dark already. Last night, the sun was still in the sky. I'm sure they've already finished. Alright, here's the plan. Me and Octavia will go in there, and they'll think it's just me and her. And then we're gonna be like, we're gonna teach you a lesson, then bust it, and that'll surprise them. Oh, well, that's what I was supposed to say. Oh, okay. No, that did not happen. That's a bad word. We don't say bad words. Where's Janice? They're we are not retarding. They're just pretending. I know they are. Arnetta, come on, let's just leave. We're gonna teach you girls a lesson. Shut up, Janice. It was nice meeting you guys. We're gonna leave, okay? Don't tell anyone about this, okay? Why not? You get in trouble. I know, I know. And if you did say something, then you'd be a tattletale. I like tattletale. It's alright girls, it's gonna be alright. Well they will apologize. When the parents find out, every one of them will be on punishment. It's alright, it's alright. I mean, it could have happened. You see, our girls are not retarded. They're just delayed learners. You see, we come from Decatur Children's Academy. And some of them just have special needs. Now we can't go to the bathroom by ourselves. Yes you will. We'll just have to wait till we get back to Decatur's. I don't want to wait. I want my independence back. Lord bless them. You see, some of our girls are echolalic. That means that they will say whatever they hear. Like an echo. That's where the word comes from. It comes from echo. I mean, not all of them have the most progressive of parents. I mean, if they heard a bad word, they could have repeated it. Uh, but I guarantee you that it would not have been intentional. I saw her say the word, I heard it. That's impossible. She doesn't speak. I mean, she can, but she doesn't. Oh yeah, it wasn't her. It was her. You don't want it? My father, the veteran. You know, why do we have to be stuck in a camp full of retired girls, you know? You know why? My mama and I went to the mall in Buckhead one time, and this white lady just kept looking at us like we were foreign or something, like we were from China. There is this one time. Oh, shut up, snot. Go on, Laurel. What happened? Well, my father and I were in this mall, but I was the one doing the staring. There are these white people dressed like Puritans or something, but they weren't Puritans. They were Mennonites. There are these people who, if you ask them to do a favor, they have to do it, like paint your porch or something. It's their rules. Come on, you're lying. I am not. How do you know it's not made up? It's not made up. I know because when I was looking at them, my father said, see those people? If you ask them to do something, they'll do it, anything you want. He went up to the man and asked him would he paint our porch, and the man said yes. It's their religion. His whole family was with him. My dad drove them to our house. They all painted our porch. Why? He said it was the only time you have a white man on his knees doing something for free for a black man. Did he think that? No. <laughs> so if I asked them to take off their long skirts and bonnets and put on jeans with it? And that's when I knew there was something mean in the world that I just could not stop. 